Welcome to season one, two, three, four, five of Meet the Drapers, the world's largest international business plan competition. We're going global. We traveled the globe scouring the US, India, Taiwan, Portugal, Canada, and Brazil for their best and brightest entrepreneurs. This is amazing. Every week, these entrepreneurs will compete against their countrymen for a chance to make it to our international semifinals and then on to finals to compete for a $1 million investment from Tim Draper himself. The crystal ball ultimately chooses. But here's the twist. Your favorite business eliminated too early? Vote them back into the finale to get a second chance in front of judges Tim, Polly and Bill Draper as well as their VIP guest judges. Let the games begin. Welcome everybody to Meet the Drapers. This is our fifth season. We can't believe we're still on the air, but it is awesome. We also have four judges who you've seen before. Andy is at Draper Associates as my partner, but we have an amazing guest judge today, Peter Diamandis. Peter is extraordinary as a futurist. He is a New York Times bestseller with two books, and he's now also a venture capitalist with Bold Ventures. Peter, welcome to the Thank show. You. Thank you, Tim. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the future holds. Absolutely, it probably holds a lot of dancing on the show and a lot, and a lot, of, cel a lot of celebration. That was last episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I think it's about it for now. Yeah. Uh, but the, if the music comes on, I'm up. You know, listen, we're living in the most extraordinary time ever in human history. We're gonna become a multi-planetary species, we're gonna be living in the you know multiverses, and I think we're going to be adding 20 or 30 healthy years on people's lives and intercepting a whole slew of technologies that add another 20 or 30 healthy years on your life. So the question is, how long do you want to live? Well, I mean, if, you, if, I, you could, if I could bring you back I want 20 to years, go another 20 years. Okay, you're going to do that for me. That's the goal. He's working uh, the, on it. the science today uh, shows us that it's possible to slow, stop, and possibly reverse aging. You have the same genes you had at birth, at age 20, at 40, at 60, at 80, at 100, and so that control of which genes are on and off. Uh, is believed to be the key to being able to reverse age, to bring you back to a period of earlier homeostasis. You heard it here first. There we are. Terrific. Okay, so let's bring on our first entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. We teach computers how to interact with you rather than you having to learn the limitations of a computer. We are a female-led founder company in hard tech. There are not a lot of um, us around. So I hope to be a role model um, to inspire other women to pursue the STEM career, to pursue leadership role, or to take the plunge um, and you know, run their own startup. Personally, being able to go ahead and share this journey with my wife, Sherry, it allows us to go ahead and like have each challenge be another adventure that we go ahead and take together. So let's hear from our first entrepreneur, Neural Lab. Give us your pitch. We at Neural Lab, we are defining the future of human computer interface. And it looks something like this. Remember the movie Minority Report where Tom Cruise used air gesture oh, yeah. to manipulate crime scene data? We bringing this to reality. While our vision is inspired by sci-fi, the genesis of our company happened because of the pandemic. We were caring for an immunocompromised family member and we were really concerned for the lack of touchless and sterilized solutions out in public. We decided to use a camera to translate your hand motion into mouse and keyboard input. Unlike existing solution, which requires specialized sensor camera and years of integration effort, 
you can get our solution working in five minutes without writing a single line of code. Beyond demand spurred by the pandemic, like point of sales, kiosks, there are also a lot of unmet demand in highly sterilized environments such as medical, operating room, and doctor's offices. Our uh, technology is able to go ahead and replace hand-based control. As much as people want to go ahead and experience AR and VR experiences, um, you're still tethered to reality doing something with a game controller. Ours, you can have like free form. Oh, that's going to be interesting. So you can be free form. You don't have to hold on to those two little weapons that you've got. That's right. No controllers to run out of batteries, to lose or get angry and destroy. Who's your customer here? Our initial strategy is licensed to OEM because that allows us to reach uh, the greatest number of customers. Uh, but eventually, we plan to offer this as a SaaS solution where you can just download off the web like Zoom um, and have it working on any camera. And then the third phase of our um, strategy is to offer it as you know, an API um, for, as, for developers. Where are you in terms of uh, any kind of intellectual property protection on this? And have you sold any of these yet? Yeah, we actually pre-revenue, but we do have over 10 customers um, testing our product um, currently. And we are also you know, in discussion with the Fortune 200 companies. We have filed patents over a large number of IP that we have. Because this technology has been around for a while, we have things that allow us to go ahead and uh, de determine if it's an intentional interaction versus an unintentional interaction. If you're doing a critical transaction in a hospital or you're doing a financial transaction, you want to go ahead and be sure that no one can go ahead and maliciously do something. We also have patents around being able to go ahead and smooth the interaction. So just as you know in, uh, intuitively to close the distance quicker to shake someone's hand and when you get closer to use your visual cues to negotiate the last couple of inches. We do that. How long have you been in business? It's been a year since we launched. Is there a, am I starting to have to learn a new language with my hands in order to communicate with a computer? We envision, you know, in the future when we move to the 3D metaverse world, it would be like you're interacting with the real world. If you're a surgeon, you, you would just like, you know, practice operating metaverse with your hand uh, versus, you know, using joystick. Uh, game controllers. Can you give us an example of what a license agreement looks like? What, what you get, what they get? So our initial strategy with OEM is just, you know, strictly yearly license per unit, per users. And as far as, you know, interaction with end user, I think that's going to be dependent on the contract. Um, ideally, I mean, we, we will be collecting data from the end users, but we eventually, you know, do plan to introduce to direct to consumer um, or so, you know, as a platform for developer. I'm curious, in 10 years, how, how big do you think this company becomes in terms of revenue or market cap? So in 10 years, we, we think this is going to be a um, 400 billion annual revenue potential. If we're successful, your children, grandchildren will never know what a mouse is. How big are you now? <laughs> Not you just started. Million. You just started. <laughs> Has started. anybody signed a license agreement with you? We have some uh, partnership contract in place, um, but actual sales contract, we hope to start collecting those in the next quarter. How do you divide uh, your responsibility? She's the, CT the CEO, I'm the CTO. So um, the business side, um, she focuses on. I do more of the exploratory portion of like the, the technology. You guys are great. This is a really major breakthrough in, the, in gestures. But anyway, thank you very much. Oh no, we don't use our hands. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Terrific. So what did you all think of Neurolab? Well, you can tweet me at Tim Draper and tell me what you thought of Neurolab or you can just listen to the judges. So Peter, what did you think of Neuralab? I was about to tweet you, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it wrong. <laughs> My biggest concern is they don't have a use case to focus in on yet. Because I don't buy the use case right now of what launches the immunocompromised at home and so forth. But someplace there is, on your phone, on your machine, at home in some way, there's going to be a great use case. So if I were them, I'd be they thinking about They said something about medical. Like, you yeah, know, a surgeon that, yes, doesn't want to go over I, there and touch anything. It just could, said, hey. Could well, could well be in the medical arena, and uh, I know the companies they should speak to. But um, 
I almost would love to see them open source it and let a thousand entrepreneurs experiment with it. Ooh, Polly, what'd you think? I would say its first incarnation would be video games, that, that mm -hmm. people would be really excited about the video game that had, that was touchless and had, already there's some. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Andy, what did you think? Right, so that this is a perfect segue. I think there are existing solutions using hardware. The question is, are these software-only solutions as accurate as these laser bays, for instance, or sometimes people wear sensors? Well, let's bring on our next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. You know, being an entrepreneur is one of the hardest jobs in the world, I think, because we have to believe in something that does not exist yet, and we have to create something out of nothing. There's a lot of disappointment, right? Not everybody sees the world we do. Not everybody believes the way we believe. Waking up every morning, even after a very discouraging day, and then going back out there, you know, you have to, like, muster up that courage every single day and that uh, belief to go forward. I have three kids, and I see that I want to create a future that they're very excited to live in. Um, I also want to be a great role model for my daughters. I have two girls and I want them to grow up and know that they can be entrepreneurs, that they can create a world and that nothing can stop them. You're going to get knocked down 10 times, but you have to get up 10 times every single time. The world needs your ideas. Put that idea together, build a company, dare to do it. You will find amazing people along the way that will help and take it where you need it to go. We will be right back after a quick break. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X, and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play. You can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies and if your company goes and becomes a semi-finalist, you get 5X on your money. If in the semi-finals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5X on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10X on your money. So we're gonna have a leaderboard and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers.